Aloha and welcome to another episode of Hawaii Food and Farmers Series, where we talk to Hawaii's farmers, foodies, and also those that are working to help make Hawaii's local food system that much better. I'm your co-host, Matt Johnson, here with Justine Espiritu. And as always, we're here uh, Thursdays, uh, 4 p.m. Uh, so this week we have uh, a slightly different special guest that Justine is going to introduce. They're all, they're all special. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're lucky today to have Charlie Lorenz, uh, the executive director of Feeding Hawaii Together. Um, like Matt said, we have a lot of chefs, we have farmers, we have different business operators, and an important issue we haven't touched upon or talked about is what about the folks that, that don't have access to food? Um, what about the resources in our community that are providing those services? As well as where does some of our food go if it doesn't get bought in the store or excess? And so a good example of one of those organizations is Feeding Hawaii Together. Dot org. And uh, it's especially important, uh, recently they have lost the lease on their land, so they're looking for um, some new space, so kind of putting it out there, looking for about 10,000 square feet. So thank you, Charlie, for coming on. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, why don't we start with kind of explaining what is the service uh, you guys are providing? Okay. What we do, what we provide is we provide um, food, up to three million pounds of food a year, um, perishable, non-perishable, and, um, and uh, we also um, provide furniture, dishes, appliances, everything that can go into a household. So if there's something that, that, um, <clears throat> that like, like uh, a desk or something like that we usually don't take that because because the people that we're dealing with there are mostly in poverty level and they don't really need a desk because they're really cramped anyway so there's there's um, we what we do is we collect all that stuff the food and everything and and the household goods and then from there we we give it all away so there's no money exchange there and we have um, a number of different nonprofit organizations that come in because we have so many people there, like up to 400. Sometimes we actually realized that when we, when we were doing an audit that there was one day that we had 500 people come. Wow. And we get, we get um, uh, 10 to 25, sometimes more, new clients a day. Mm. Wow. And they're, they're hungry. It's, mm. it's, and this is not, people think that it's only homeless, and it's not only homeless. It's, in fact, our stats show that it's less than 10% homeless. So, and we're right in Kakaako, and that's where there's a lot of affordable housing. I call it so, so, so called affordable housing because it really isn't affordable. And, but we're making it affordable. We're keeping them from going homeless, and, and, um, they can come and they can shop once a week. They, they actually shop with the groceries, with, with the um, shopping cart. And they'll go through the pantry and they, they pick out what they want and what they don't want and everything, you know. And, and uh, our goal is to fill their refrigerators, their freezers, and their cupboards with all, all the food that, that, that we can provide for them. And um, it's been, it's been a, long, a long journey. Our landlord um, was uh, really good to us, very, very, very good to us, and, and he reduced the price so much because because he liked what we were doing, mm. and um, so yeah, that's my wife. <laughs> so we're we're the uh, co uh, co founders of Feeding Hawaii Together, and um, um, it's um, just been. A good ride. Fifteen years we've been in this building, mm -hmm. and it's a perfect building. It has. And this is just right off of Queen Street. It's like yeah. Queen and what's the street it's on? It's on Kiabi. Kiabi Street. Okay. So in between Queen and Halikuila. Okay. On Kiabi Street, right in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Charlie, talk a little bit about the 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 I guess the clientele that you're serving. Who are the people coming and getting food and other materials from you guys, and what does that process look like? You were showing us. Earlier, talking about some of the USDA stats, kind of like yeah. the poverty line levels that you're working with. What are the, I guess, the requirements for eligibility 
and the, the kind of people that you're working with. Okay, so we, we have, um, um, let me show you this right here. Let's see, probably can't see it. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so. We'll just describe it to them. Okay, so, so we're, we're governed by um, USDA standards and, and Hawaii Food Bank too, but mostly USDA standards. And um, USDA standards has a poverty level and it's a sliding scale on mm -hmm. the poverty level. So, so it's, it's like if, if, um, if a person comes in that earns less than $24,000 a year, we'll let them shop because they're in poverty level. And if the sliding scale goes all the way down to eight persons, eight persons in a household that can earn 78,000, well, just say 79,000, round it up. $79,000, that's poverty level. That's a lot of people to feed, to, to feed and, and provide services for, you know, beds and everything. And, you know, we, we had this person one, one time, that, you know, we, this, this guy called me up and he, he was, um, um, uh, wanted, wanted to give us beds. Mm. And <laughs> so he wanted to give, give us a thousand beds. Wow. Yeah. So I said, I can't take a thousand beds. <laughs> yeah. Are you going crazy or something? You know, we do food mostly. Yeah. yeah. So he said, well, you know, I, I mean, we model in a hotel and they're nice beds. And mm -hmm. we'll, give, we'll give you, you know, um, maybe 25 to 30 at a time. And mm -hmm. I said, well, I don't know if that's going to work because it's still a lot of beds. Right. You know. So he talked me into taking 12. I took 12 beds. And, you know, because the community there. Yeah. See in Kaka'ako, yeah. and all of the low-income housing, they talk about everything. They like, go, oh, they got hamburger now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got, they, they got, they got pork and beans, and they got whatever <laughs> you know, all yeah. the good stuff that, that right, they like, right, right. you know. And and it, and, it, and then we get bombarded, you know. Hmm. So so here we are with these beds, and and all of a sudden our phone is just ringing off the hook with oh, the clients. Wow. They you guys want got beds, you got beds, you got beds, you got hotel beds, you know, because yeah. lots, lots of times we get beds, but they're not too, you know, too good. You know, we make sure there's no bed bugs and right, stuff, right. but they're still just, you know, kind of on the margin. Right. So, so these were really choice beds. And to make a long story short, we gave away a thousand beds. Wow. Wow. And it went like that. Incredible. It was incredible, exactly. And we don't deliver furniture. They have to take it. They have to. They have to come and take it. So this this woman that lives in Pohonani, mm. she and she has been shopping there for a long time. Yeah. So she comes and she tells me. She goes, uh, you know, you, what she did was she went and got the security guards to carry the bed for her in the building. Oh, okay. She, she, I don't have. She said, I don't have a bed. Can you guys? I didn't even know she didn't have a bed. Right. right. You know. So she she was 80 years old, oh, and. Wow. Um, for 10 years, from 70 to 80, she didn't have a bed. Wow. And now how many beds go into landfills mm. every week? Mm -hmm. Every week, how many beds? I guess that's kind of an interesting concept too, like a group like Reuse Hawaii, right? Also yes, in the Kaka'ako area. Yes, Reuse Hawaii, yes. And you guys are kind of doing that, I mean, you're doing the very similar thing where Correct. you're trying to reuse food and also yeah. other materials that people need. So yeah. that's a neat kind of combination of services. and. Yeah, we talk about all these issues about too much stuff going in the landfill. Yes. And it's really just kind of like this, this matchmaking mm -hmm. of what you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you're uh, telling us over the break um, where you guys are a little bit different than some of the other, uh, I guess, food establishments where food you guys are yeah. on the, you know, you're literally on the street and people are coming, waiting in line. Yes. And they're, they're shopping. Mm -hmm. inside the pantry and then mm -hmm. they're going home with stuff so you guys are kind of like that that final uh, I guess the last mile of how the product actually gets to the people that need it yeah yeah and we, we don't give away um, food that's been uh, expired mm. so it's, it's all good stuff mm. you know there, there's sometimes we get a little bit marginal on the on the um, peri the uh, uh, produce mm -hmm. on the produce but um, you know, other than that, it's it's all good food. I mean, we get, we get food that's just amazing. You know, because we're on an island, mm -hmm. and so sometimes people get the the wrong shipment. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't want Diet Pepsi. I wanted Pepsi, and they call. The, the and they don't have a, like ten other stores to distribute it out to. Exactly, 
yeah. So, so yeah. That this this woman right there, that is she. She's an amazing woman. I mean, she can barely stand up straight. Mm. She's, she's really bent o bent over more than you know the, the cart she's hanging on to oh, uh, yeah. to try to stay up a little bit straighter. She comes every week, every week, and she's always so happy. I mean, th this, these people are just happy. Once in a while, we get some testy people, you know, but, <laughs> but we take care of them, and, and you know, we, we try to try to make sure that that the testy people don't don't um, um, ruin everybody's day. You know, the, the amazing thing is, you know, human nature. You know, you could have you could have we could have 500 people, 400 people a day, and what was that for now? <laughs> we're going to take, we're going to take a quick, I told you what that meant. Oh, okay. yeah, you told me. We're going to take a quick, take a break. one minute break, and then we'll get right back okay. to it. Okay, all right. Hello, my name is Crystal. Let me tell you, my talk show, I'm all about health. It's healthy to talk about sex. It's healthy to talk about things that people don't talk about. It's healthy to discuss things that you think are unhealthy because you need to talk about it. So I welcome you to watch Quok Talk and engage in some provocative discussions on things that do relate to healthy issues and have a well-balanced attitude in life. Join me. Aloha. My name is John Waihe, and I actually had a small part to do with what's happening today. Served actually in public office. But if you don't already know that, here's a chance to learn more about what's happening in our state by joining me for Talk Story with John Waihe every other Monday. Thank you, and I look forward to you're seeing us in the future. Aloha and welcome back to Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. I'm your co-host, Justine Spiritu. This is my co-host, Matthew Johnson. Today's guest is Charlie Lorenz from FeedingHawaiiTogether.org. So we spent the past 15 minutes kind of talking about the services you provide and you were talking about some of the stories with the, some of the particular clients yeah, that come. So if you want to finish. Yeah, so, so you know, what happens a lot of times, you know, you have like 400 shoppers a day or something like that. And, you know, 399 are so grateful and they're just like really excited and so happy and everything. But human nature is like one person to get to, that just, just it d doesn't appreciate it or, or, you know, I don't know how else to Or has it. higher expectations. Yeah. Or how come we don't have this or yeah, that? Or, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so. You should get those people everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just ruins their day. I mean, it's just like, it's like, I'm not like, I'm like, you know, 399 people are thanking you and you're going to focus on the one that gets negative. Right, you know? right, right. And, and a good example was, was, was this, this, this person, I won't say his name, but um, he, <laughs> he, he's homeless and, and he, came, he came in about three or four times and then we had to ban him because, oh, because he's just foul mouth and he's just pushing people and mm. he's doing, you know, and he's just, he was just, it was just wasn't working you know mm -hmm. so so I saw him on the side of the road one day and and uh, on Hawaii Street so I, I pull up I jump out of my car and I go up to him and you know, I, I knew him by name and I, I, I asked him I said you know um, you know it, can, do you, are you hungry do you need food mm. and he goes yeah but but you guys don't give me any I said no we will give you food mm. I said, can you say please? And he says, please. And I said, can you say thank you? Mm. And he said, thank you. Mm -hmm. And, and um, I said, if you just go come to the pantry and just say please and thank you, mm. we will give you a lot of food. Can you do that? Mm. And he said, okay. And he came in the next day, please and thank you, please and thank oh, you. Oh, nice. It was amazing. And, and then, you know, this guy was just like, I mean, you see him all over town, and he's just, he's just got a shirt on, got a shirt off, and he's just like talking to himself and everything. And then, you know, after about three months, I had to go, to, go into my wife's office mm -hmm. to get to pull her out, because he was, he, he was having a normal conversation with a girl. Oh, okay. A normal conversation. Like, look what's going on. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like he's all grown up. Yeah. <laughs> 
because it was amazing. And and then um, um, sometimes he's he we you know our our our, uh, our <coughs> volunteers give him money for um, for washing the cars or waxing oh, the cars. Okay. So, so uh, he's earning money. You know. So it kind of became part of the community. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is great. And it, he's he's in there helping now and everything. Yeah. It's really cool. And then, so really quickly before we, we kind of go into what it would what it would mean if you lose your space and don't find yeah. another space, what other kind of partnerships do you have um, at your space that you let others? Because since you kind of mentioned people kind of wait their turn, they're in that kind of holding area for a yes. while. Yes. And so if, if you could talk a little bit about the opportunity you've given to other nonprofits and other service providers yeah. for access. Well, one of the biggest ones is, is um, of course, we don't, we have no money exchange at all. I think I said that already. And so when they come in as a service provider, they cannot charge anything. If they charge anything, then, then it's off. Mm -hmm. So, but we have Helping Hands Hawaii that comes in that, that is helping people get food stamps. And um, unfortunately, the um, welfare offices are overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when people come in, they, they make an appointment and they come in and they, they fill out their form, and a lot of them can't fill out the forms accurately. I mean, we notice that when we're when we're um, get when they're filling out our forms, mm -hmm. you know. And um, so, so they get a lot of grant money for for food stamps and and sometimes first month's rent and and uh, deposit and things like that. If if some somebody is homeless and has a proven track record that they've been working for so many hours or so many weeks. Mm. And so, and those grants are spr sporadic, but, mm -hmm. but that, and then uh, Blue Jay cell phones, you know, um, oh, yeah. they, they provide a service where it's just a, an absolutely free phone. Wow. No, no money exchanged at all. And I think it's about 800, 800 minutes a month. And, <clears throat> and with, with that, it happened, what, what goes on, it's, yeah, there they are right there. So <laughs> that's pretty cool. <laughs> So, so, um, so they'll 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 provide to provide this service, and um, eight hundred minutes a month, and if, if for texting and calling, and if if it goes over eight hundred minutes, mm. it shuts down. Oh, good. And then at the first of the month, the next month, it kicks back in. So there's no way they get charged. And then it's, you said kind of one sweet. of the motivations Which behind that is. That. Is co is a way to be contacted when they're applying for jobs or, exactly. or for services. Exactly. Exactly. And then even mailboxes. So so um, there's a Kaimaki up in Kaimaki. There's a place I forget the name of the organization right now slipping my mind that um, that provides mailboxes. Okay. So we all we're all networking, and then okay. IHS comes in to, to to give them employment. And, um, the Institute for Human Services. Yes, and to, yes, them, and then and then also, um, um, uh, gosh, what is that? Legal, um, legal aid. Legal aid. Yeah. Legal aid comes in, and and you know people can you know we, we make announcements whenever there's somebody new and yeah. the clients don't know about them. Mm -hmm. We make announcements and tell them that we can do this, and then, then the, the, we have a guy Michael that comes in and he. He sees if their medical is, is up, okay. to, up to speed and stuff like that. And so within this network, are you guys right now the only ones that have that space to kind of make this a, yeah. a central location where, where everyone can kind of come yeah. together and reach these people at the same time? Yeah, unfortunately, that, you know, there's, there's, it's, it's hard to get the space. Mm -hmm. but, and, and without the space, then you know, they, they just can't do it. But it, it's not just the space, it's also the amount of people. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when you when you get a big crowd that's sitting there waiting to come in, yeah, they're waiting to come in. Now this is the outside. Wow. Going yeah. up to the going up to the, <coughs> the building now, and, and if you have a shot of the inside where they're waiting, no, 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 not that in, not that inside. That's good though. But, <laughs> but the, is on the, fire in, today. the inside of the, where they're all sitting down. So we have a place where they're all sitting down, and that's where all the tables are and all that. So I mean, really, so, your footprint is—I mean, you're you're taking over a block. I mean, you have the building right now you're in is about ten thousand square feet, and then you have that entire. Uh, no, it's sixteen. It's it's it's, 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 um, it's it's almost twenty thousand. Oh, twenty thousand. Wow. Yeah. Oh, we're we're gonna we're gonna cut down. I know that. 
So, so Charlie, yeah, why don't you talk about, um, like, what are you, so, so you, unfortunately you're losing the lease of where you are now. Yes. Um, landlord's been great, but just other things have happened, so you need to move on. What what are, are you looking for? What's the ideal situation for you? Ideal situation would be 10,000 minimum, 10,000 minimum, and have a place. 10,000 square foot building. 10,000 square foot building, and have a place where we could, we could have people staged, you know, like, like sitting in chairs out of the sun and out of the rain, mm -hmm. and which we have now, yep. and and they get water and they can go in and out of the building, use the restroom and everything like that. That's what Almost like have. an outside awning type area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you know, right <clears> now we have three loading docks. It's covered loading docks. Okay. So, so that works really well. It's it's great. And then. Once they get in there, you know, then, then they can shop and do the whole thing. But we're losing the building, and um, the landlord has been so good to us, yeah. you know, so we're not fighting them at all. But um, we, we're, just, we're just looking for something that would be affordable, and he made it so affordable. Mm. He spoiled us for 15 years. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it was father, son, and, and, uh, and the wife. Okay. And... Um, they don't want to be known, <laughs> mm. right, 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 right. but yeah. So it's it they, they've been it's it's really good. So we're looking for something like that, that that could you know I hope we get it because if we don't get it, mm -hmm. if we don't get it, if we don't get a place that we can move to, and set up the re refrigerators and freezers and the pallet shelves and and the scales and all the computers and everything that that we need to do this operation with. Um, most of this food is going to be going in landfills. Right, well there's like two issues here. The number of people that are going to go hungry, and like you said, mm -hmm. right now you're giving them the option to use their money for rent instead of food. And medicine. Yeah. It's, some, some of these people, they don't even have enough money to pay for all their prescriptions. Mm -hmm. And you know, when we really start talking to them sometimes, it's just, it's just sad, you know, because these people are paying rent and we're calling it affordable housing. Mm. That is not right. It is not affordable. Mm -hmm. There is no way, shape, and form it's infor affordable. But we're helping them to stay in their houses, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and 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 to 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 get the uh, all their needs met. Right. Because. And I, one of the things you mentioned is that you definitely want to stay in the Kaka'ako Ibele area. And I'm curious how that works out with the the kind of development that's that's going on. If these kind of people are getting kind of brushed away from that, how yeah. do you? Well, that that's one factor that we might not see a reality to. Mm -hmm. So maybe Ibele, Ibele, we've searched Ibele, and they want a lot of money. And mm -hmm. it's it's it, it's just. Um, we might have to go further out, but the main thing if we go further out mm. is that we have a bus line real close to us. Right. Because without a bus line, your senior citizens only have to buy, pay one fee. Um, for a, multiple stops? No, only only one fee for, for a the bus year. pass for the oh, year. Okay. For the whole year, they could ride the bus, you know, all day and all night. Right, right. <laughs> so that's an important factor. If you get a yeah. space that doesn't have that bus stop, you're gonna lose some of your clientele in the sense of those people then don't well, have Well, it wouldn't be losing the clientele. It's to, it, that it's, it's more that there's more people that's going to be starving. Right. Mm. And, do, and that, that's, that's, the, that's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we, 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 can't, we can't let them starve. Right. You know, and, and you know, we, we had to close down one month because of termites and we had to oh, shore up wow. some beams and stuff yep. like that. And uh, when they came back in, the, after, after, you know, we opened up again, it was like we we were like um, they, they were telling us that they were eating cat food and dog food for the past. For the, it was a five week month and the two uh, last weeks of the month crackers, cat food, and dog food. And so, if you guys stopped operations, there's not necessarily another organization that could take on that surplus. Basically, everything you're getting will be because there's not that. What's the word? Enough. I mean, how many different organizations are there like you that are providing this service? Well, we had we did have an opening for Wahiwa, and um, we I I called Hawaii Food Bank and talked to Roxanne and said, hey, um, we have a, an opening for a food pantry in Wahiwa. I mean, there's some space available. Yes, and she said Wahiwa is saturated already. Hmm. So they have serving the nation services and, providing. Oh, interesting. Yes. Okay. Yes. 
So we want to be where we're needed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, so the people that we serve right now aren't going to hop on a bus and go to Waterloo. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that we're going to be in a place that's needed, and it has to have a bus stop. Sand Island, the bus, the buses don't run mm -hmm. past. You know, I already said that. <laughs> well, not not to just to <laughs> us uh, off camera. You even said it. Oh, to everyone else. I yeah. did it. Yeah, we said that before. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so, so Sand Island. It, you know, there's there's building spaces down there, and they have platforms where we could put, build, put up a sprung structure or something. We could probably do, do that on you know, if we just had land, vacant land. We could we could probably do a sprung structure with grants and stuff like that. And you know, it's it's so it's if if there's not a bus line going to where we end up, then a lot of people can't come. Is that like a conversation you could have with the city in terms of? Let's Maybe. find a location and let's work together. Like, can you add this? That might work. That's a good idea. That yeah. might work. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. once you turn the corner across KE Lagoon, there's some platforms and everything's been wiped off of them. And they, they got a few warehouses over there. And for those work, I don't, I don't know. I think it's state. I don't know. Mm, okay. so. We can work on that. Yeah. And, so then, and then we went past, you know, over the bridge. And it's like, no way. I don't know how the people get out of there, you know, that's got the, the, the housing yeah. down there. Yeah. There's no bus stop. So just, uh, we're almost out of time. So I just kind of want to summarize what I guess you guys are looking for. So it's about a 10,000 square foot building or more. Yes. Uh, preferably in the Kaka'ako, Ivale, Chinatown area. Yes. Um, but also important that there's a bus stop nearby. Yes. Um, also, it needs to be at a certain price point. It needs to be affordable yes. uh, for you guys to be able to, to cover the costs. Um, yes. Is there anything anything else I'm missing? No. We we looked at the Bolarama. Bolarama. So, so Where's that, that? That's okay. that's like uh, closer to university. Okay. And there's a lot of there's a lot of homeless at the university, mm -hmm. okay. even students. So so they they come to us too. So, yeah, definitely a resource and a service that's important to keep. So good luck. And thanks for coming on to kind of share what you do. And hopefully this can perk some more interest. Yeah, out there. awesome. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Charlie. Thank you. It's been good.